How does the internet know where to send me? Let's start with the basics. Unless you've gone to the considerable trouble of ripping this beautifully crafted video and burning it onto a DVD, or even recording it onto a VHS tape, then you are watching this on a computer. Even if it isn't an actual PC or a Mac, then it's a tablet or a smartphone which shares its basic technical architecture with a computer. So it is a computer. This video is a digital file that sits on another computer, or rather, a brain-fryingly vast number of other computers. It might be one of Google's server farms, it might be a web cache server. And a web cache server is a sort of holding tank for the most popular items. It's a bit like the salt pot in a kitchen, something you use all the time. The only thing that links these two computers is, of course, the internet, which also links every other online device in the world. That's billions and billions of devices. So the idea of finding a particular one is a bit like trying to locate one molecule of water in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So how does the internet sort out your request to watch me in this video, or even your request for a subscription to Head Squeeze, which you can do right here. Uh, how does it sort that out from all the requests to look at, say, pictures of fluffy kittens or to update your social media profile to single but curious? Rules, that's how. And in the world of computing, rules come in the form of acronyms. So pay attention, because here are the important ones. IP address, the internet protocol address. Protocol in computing is just another word for rule. And the IP address is a unique number assigned to every device on the internet. Now normally it's an 11 digit number, but because we're running a bit short of these, it might be an 18 character combination of digits and letters. URL, Uniform Resource Locator. That's the name of the website to you and me. ISP, Internet Service Provider. These are the people who provide your connection to the internet, the people you're with. DNS, Domain Name Server. This is really just a sort of glorified telephone directory telling you which internet protocol addresses are connected to which uniform resource locators. Because really the internet I don't want to spoil the magic here, but it is like a giant telephone network with cables and wireless signals simply connecting people and devices to the internet all over the world. The job of the internet is like that of the operator in the telephone exchange in an old black and white film, pulling out those little plugs and pushing them back in again to connect people to Scotland Yard or whatever. The problem for you is that unless you have a memory like Rain Man, then you're unlikely to remember the internet protocol address of every single website you want to visit. Fortunately though, you don't have to. Ready? When you type a website's URL into your browser, it sends this request to your ISP. This is looking for a DNS, the big telephone directory. Your ISP will have its own DNS, which will know all the popular websites. This one, for example, to which you can subscribe, in fact. But if you're looking for something unpopular, such as a clip with Richard Hammond in it, then it might not know. In which case, it will relay your URL request to other DNSs until it finds one that knows the IP address of the site you're looking for. It will then fire this information back to your ISP's DNS, which will relay the information to your computer. So now it knows the IP address. So in the end, one IP address is connecting to another IP address, just like two telephones connecting to each other. Once connected, your computer can start downloading the text or pictures or video files from the host server. And it will do this using another acronym-laden set of computing rules, such as the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. And also the Transfer Control Protocol, or TCP, which dictates how information is broken up into small packets, which can be sent separately, sometimes in fact by completely different routes, before being reassembled on your computer as pictures of kittens, films of people falling off their bicycles, or tedious emailed lists of doctor doctor jokes that you get on a Monday morning to cheer you up. Makes you wonder why we bother, really. Incidentally, the whole process just described has potentially seen your request travel around the world several times, which is amazing when you think about it.
but I bet if the page takes more than three seconds to appear, you will still sit there at your desk moaning about how slow your internet is. Well, there is a lot of stuff on it that isn't true, obviously, because anybody can put any old rubbish on there. But if you approach it with a vaguely academic mindset, which you should do when you're looking things up in books, you can look at several sources and see this stuff is starting to match up. That's somewhere near the truth. This other stuff is rubbish.